My dear elegant ladies, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to give you some insider information and spill a little bit of tea because I am going to take you behind the scenes to my beauty makeover that I did in 2019. If you are one of my students in my elite finishing school where I teach women about elegance and high society, then you probably are tired of hearing me saying that transformation never stops. And really ladies, that is my true mantra when it comes to this elite transformation that I teach. The point that I'm trying to make is that if you want to become a high caliber woman, you can never become lazy in your own transformation. You always have to invest in yourself, you always have to do maintenance on yourself, and you always have to stay on top of your game when it comes to your appearance. Competition is tough out there, but if we stay on top of our game, we will beat the competition. So ladies, let's start with number one because I am going to tell you everything that I changed in my appearance in 2019. But first of all, let's start with a few before pictures. So these pictures that were taken about a year ago, and it's not that anything dramatically has happened. I have just tweaked a few things, updated certain other things, and also had a few realizations of what actually suited me or not. One thing that I really want to emphasize on is that we never stop growing, meaning that if we think that we are on top of something today, doesn't mean that that thing is going to last us forever and ever. Things change, times change, and we evolve as well. So it's really important to always fine tune your yourself because only this way will you be able to stay on top of your game which I keep nagging about over and over so keep this in mind ladies when you do your transformation okay so having said all this let's start with number one so one of the things that I did change or fine-tuned a little bit in 2019 that was my hair I didn't do anything dramatic to my hair if you compare with old pictures of me my hair is still you know I like it to have it on one side However, I have been actually experimenting with a little bit of different hairstyles. But this is my hair situation, ladies. If you saw my video before and after, you already know by now that I have hair extensions. And I've also mentioned on my Instagram, make sure you follow me there, that I don't like to have my hair so much here on both sides. But there are exceptions with certain hairstyles, which I started to experiment with in 2019. I was very comfortable having my hair on the side all the time and to be honest one of the main reasons why I love having my hair on one side is simply because it's more comfortable for me it keeps me kind of open here and also I like to show off kind of one side of my face which is usually my best side whilst kind of hiding the other one so it's really a personal preference but the truth of the story is that I'm also in areas and I love to have change in my life I don't don't really like to have too much dramatic change but I like to have small subtle changes from time to time so in 2019 I definitely wanted to update my hair but I didn't want to do something dramatic I am never going to go dark brown again which I used to be back in the days I used to have really dark hair and was only for a short amount of time but long enough for me to never want to go back to it again I really believe in a hair color that is as close as possible to your own natural hair color. I personally do highlights and in 2019, because I changed country and city, I also changed hairdresser, which, well, let's put it this way, I didn't fully change hairdresser, I've been technically trying out new hairdressers in Geneva. So I've been coloring my hair with all kinds of different people and that actually has messed up my hair color a little bit, but more about that later. So one of the changes that I did was actually I went much lighter in 2019 than I have been in a while. I also decided to go a little bit shorter in my hair. My extensions used to be longer, but having longer extensions actually makes you become more limited in the hairstyles that you can do. So I decided to cut my hair with about 10 centimeters and all of a sudden it really opened up the opportunities for me to style my hair differently and just gave me this variety compared to before. Plus, it's also a little bit easier to style than it was before because before I used to only curl it the entire time. Now I shift in 
between having it straight and having it curled, having it on one side, having it on both sides, and so on. And also one other thing that I started doing, I started to implement a little bit more hair accessories. Still, ladies, on a very modest level, <laughs> I am planning to expand further in the hair accessory department in 2020. But in 2019, I did include a few hair bands, <laughs> a few hats, and uh, what else? Okay, that was it. <laughs> well, at least it's a start. Now moving on to number two. So the second thing that I also changed, well, you probably won't see too much of a dramatic difference, but actually if you start comparing with certain images of mine, you will see a big change, especially if we go back 10 years ago. What I'm talking about, ladies, is I have actually changed my lash design a little bit. Like the most common lash length that people do is like 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters of length and about 12 millimeters if you want to have it a bit longer. And my lashes are actually maximum 8 millimeter long now. I have opted for going for quite short lashes. If you think about my eye size, which my eyes are actually bigger than the average eye. And on top of it, I'm also going for a much more natural result. So I do Russian volume lashes, meaning that you have at least minimum two, three, four, five, six lashes on one lash. So you can actually have a lot of volume and have kind of a full glamorous effect on your lashes. But that's so not my style. Well, okay, let me not honk my own horn here because actually 10 years ago, I used to love those glamorous lashes. They used to look, uh, oh, Gosh, if we go back in history, I've definitely had my share of beauty mistakes happen. And one of those actually used to be my fake eyelash look because it's such a beginner mistake. Whenever you start doing your eyelashes is that you wanna go all in with lashes. It's almost like this kind of poor person's mindset. And I, I know it sounds very triggering maybe for some. What does she mean poor person's mindset? Well, you see, going to do your eyelashes is a luxury actually it is an expense especially you know it costs uh, probably around hundred dollars to do it and you have to do it once every three weeks once every four weeks depending so obviously when you go and do your lashes you don't want to hold back you want to really make sure that they're seen and that they really give you a dramatic effect you want to see a change in your appearance after all but what happens is that because of this kind of poor person's mindset that you really have to have visible strong results if you're paying money for it women actually end up looking cheaper from it as a result and that's a mistake that i personally have done in the past if you are somehow familiar with eyelash extensions you would know that having 15 millimeter long eyelashes looks ridiculous and too long and like i said my eyes are big so even on me it looks ridiculous i used to have 15 millimeter long eyelashes and ladies let me tell you one thing uh, back in those days, I used to take the public transport. And because I speak so many languages and I also understand a lot of languages, I would catch people sometimes talking to each other in a foreign language that I could understand. I think it was Spanish and Italian. And they would say things like, oh my God, look at that girl's eyes. What has she done? And they would literally look at me like, you know, so I got the message after a while because in the beginning I was telling myself, oh, people don't understand, you know, <laughs> and, and it's so funny that it, it's such a common thing that ladies do. We just kind of brush it off and we think we always know the best, right? And what sometimes other people say, we are like, oh, they don't understand. So, so did I until I actually did have a reality check and I stopped wearing such long eyelashes because I understood that, no, when you see yourself from a third person's perspective, from an, an outsider point of view, actually it doesn't look that nice, okay? So I stopped doing that and today I have eight millimeters, which is literally more than half the size. And it looks just very natural and I do maximum 2D lashes or 3D lashes. I don't do the 5D or 6D, just looks too much. I also started doing dark brown eyelashes in 2019 because I used to do black and with my fair complexion black looks a little bit harsh even though I use a 0.7 thickness and I'm not going really all in with thickness and curve. I do a C curve, which is actually quite good for my own curve. But still doing all of that, even though it's also natural and so careful in black, 
When I tried the dark brown, it was just mm, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. And now I just stick to it and it looks natural. And by the way, do you know what the best part is with having fine-tuned my own lash design to such natural results? Before I used to seriously go and refill my eyelashes every second week. I am not joking because I used to really hate having those empty patches on, on your eyes, you know, when a few lashes falls and you have like this patch there. But because my eyelashes are now so much smaller, lighter and better, they literally last me five, six weeks. It is incredible and it just saves me so much time and headache not having to run to my lash girl all the time. Number three on this list, and actually I've only spilled a little bit of detail on my Instagram and actually only on my Instagram story. Ladies, that is where all the personal action and the insider information happens. So make sure you follow me on Instagram and especially watch my stories. Anyway, those who are following me there, they know that I have done eyebrow and lip tattoo. A lot of you have asked me, Anna, what is the lipstick that you're wearing in your videos? And majority of the time, I'm not able to answer you that question because it would be slightly unfair to answer when I know that my lips are now tattooed. And of course, I apply a little bit of lipstick whenever I shoot my videos, but to be quite honest with you, with my lip tattoo and this lipstick, you will never be able to recreate the color yourself. So. I'm sorry when it comes to what lipstick am I wearing. There is simply no point for me to share that information. But going back to my lips. So my natural lips are actually quite pale. Not too much. They're not totally colorless, but they are a little bit pale. So I used to have an addiction of always having to reapply my lipstick. Otherwise I felt pretty naked. It became quite an annoyance, especially when you're out dining because you cannot run to the restroom every 10 minutes when you have no lipstick left on your lips and neither do you want to sit there and feel naked when you want to feel dressed up and good looking at a dinner party as an example. Then you have the eyebrows and I can tell you that if you watched my makeup tutorial, you probably remember that back then I actually didn't have my eyebrow tattoo and oh my gosh, it was hard getting those eyebrows correct and perfect and asymmetrical and identical and doing makeup on my eyebrows has always been the most biggest annoyance in my entire world. I just don't like it and it always takes so long and oh, okay I can really go on forever <laughs> when it comes to the eyebrows. So I told to myself you know what why don't I just cut myself some slack here, get these things tattooed. Luckily in London, I've been knowing a girl for quite some years now who is really skilled in doing both lip and eyebrow tattoo. So I contacted her and I did this and um, how it works is that basically I did powder brows, which is a little bit different than a usual permanent tattoo and much different from microblading. Microblading is something that you just basically hand draw um, like small eyebrows on your skin whilst tattoo is well tattoo you're using a machine and you're you're scarring your own skin a little bit but I can tell you one thing is that I did this you know with the machine on both my lips and on my eyebrows and there is absolutely no pain involved you are getting a little bit of numb cream and of course your lips swells up I mean if you see now my footage from when it was done you will see that my lips are huge and probably when you saw the thumbnail to this video you probably wondered what on earth has Anna done here because the size of my lips is swelled up to a balloon literally so that's kind of the only downside and of course you have like 24 hours where you just have a lot of color on your eyebrows and your lips I mean you do look a little bit like a clown afterwards so I wouldn't really plan in doing activities in the next 24 hours but that color it fades it fades away so you're pretty much good to go after 24, 48 hours. But ladies, I cannot tell you how happy I am to have done this. Oh, and another thing, you have to probably go in two, three sessions to refill because you do it first time and then the color fades away and then you go back for a refill. Usually that's included in your price, but you always have to check with the person who does it. I went back uh, two, three times to correct and just fill in a little bit of color. Number four, in 2019, I also changed my veneers. 
well, it's not really veneers, it's actually porcelain crowns. But let me tell you the story. So one of the first things that I definitely did to my own transformation, and this was many, many years ago, this was in the beginning when I was 20, I always had really bad teeth from the age of, well, from the age of birth, literally speaking. I was unfortunately born with terrible teeth, you know, teeth that are growing in all kinds of different directions. Well, okay, maybe I'm over-dramatizing a little bit, but really they weren't good. I don't even think I have any before pictures to show you because I would never ever have my mouth open or smile <laughs> when there was pictures involved. So that was a big, big challenge for me as I was growing up and uh, because I, I literally had really bad teeth ladies really bad you know it's just a genetical thing some people have it some don't what can you do so of course as soon as I had a little bit of money I did invest in putting in veneers. Well, like I said, porcelain crowns. For those of you who do not know the difference, veneers is something you put on on top of your original tooth. Porcelain crowns is like a whole tooth that you put on a very small size like this of your own tooth. So what you do is that you shave down all your teeth to kind of pigs like this, and then you have you know, a whole tooth that you literally put on individually on each tooth. I was not able to have veneers due to the terrible situation with my old teeth, with my real teeth. So I always had to do porcelain crowns. But on the positive side, porcelain crowns actually are more durable and last longer than veneers because it's common that veneers can fall off. They're a little bit more fragile. So when I did my porcelain crowns, I did them under many restrictions. Finance, for instance, I literally had to find the cheapest dentist possible, and this was in Sweden. So the dentist that I got wasn't really the best. Number two, it is a very big project because you also have to walk around with like fake teeth, they're called temporary teeth, for a few weeks while they are making your own teeth in a laboratory. I was also under big time pressure to get them done before I had to basically travel off. So having said all that, the job that that dentist did back then, it wasn't really well made. I had a natural asymmetry in my own mouth because of my own teeth growing in all kinds of directions and also because I have an asymmetry in my mouth. And that dentist did not really take that into account. So when he put in those porcelain crowns, it wasn't necessarily the best possible job but you know what back then I was literally just happy to have some form of teeth in my mouth so I could smile finally on camera and just like live a normal life like a normal person and not so self-conscious so my teeth has been long due to be changed because what happens with crowns and veneers is that they don't last forever. I mean, some maybe, but most likely you have to change them every 10, 15 years, maybe 20 years in some cases. They never really last your lifetime, unfortunately. So mine were definitely overdue to be changed. And in 2019, I finally took action because it is a bit of a project and especially wearing those temporary teeth oh gosh let me just not go in there <laughs> but I still recommend everybody to do it I don't think it's something you should hold back on teeth are important and if you have faulty teeth like I did you should definitely do something about it and this should definitely be something on your priority list and ladies trust me I speak from experience on this one Let's talk about number five and let's talk about facials and procedures in my face. Again, for those of you who are following me on Instagram, you probably know that majority of the things that I do to my face, I do it with my beloved friends at Aesta Clinic. And I just want to tell you one thing that they never sponsor me or anything like that. I just really think that they're doing such a great job and uh, we're good friends. So I'm happy to give them a shout out whenever I can. If you are in London, make sure to visit them. So in 2019, I didn't really go too crazy with facials and so on. I don't necessarily think it's the most important thing in your maintenance. It may be for some people, depending on what issues you have with your skin. I don't want to honk my own horn, but a lot of people tell me this and a lot of people who are dermatologists also tell me this. I have pretty good skin and I think that has to do with my lifestyle, with my diet and also with my genetics. We have quite good skin on my mother's side, so I guess I'm just lucky with that. 
But having said that, I mean, if you don't look after yourself in terms of diet and lifestyle, then even good genetics won't really last you that long. So it's about kind of having that balance. But I still do maintenance on my skin. And my kind of main issues have been enlarged pores. So that's something that I've been working towards resolving in this year. And I've tried a bit of different types of treatments. It wasn't up until I started trying a laser. Yes, I'm talking laser like Fraxa laser, although the laser that I did was iPixel. I did iPixel laser on my, well, I think I did it on majority of parts of my face. I did a bit of IPL here and here because I had some pigmentation from the sun and the IPL literally removed everything. I think it was in one go. Well, I don't know what they do, but they seem to have good machines. Laser as well. I was so positively surprised that even just with one treatment, I saw dramatic results. I saw really big improvements and of course, I still have my enlarged pores left, but they really went down a little bit in size. And the lady who does my treatments, she told me that you only need about three treatments and you will see a big difference. So if I'm seeing already after one, I am so excited to finish my treatments, which will be in 2020. So if you stay tuned and especially if you follow me on Instagram, you will probably hear about my results. Number six, 2019 was probably the year, well, it wasn't the only year where I stopped with tanning and self-tanning. Okay, I didn't stop entirely in terms of I still expose myself to sun a little bit, but I'm not anymore laying on in the sun and kind of frying up and hoping to get really dark so that I can look all bronzed. I am not against that, by the way and I'm not against self-tan at all. I'm just saying that I have personally maybe grown out of it a little bit. I've also understood that, okay, I am now 33. I really need to start taking responsibility for my skin because things are not really gonna improve up here. <laughs> well, actually it depends. If you do good treatments, then maybe you will. But anyway, I guess maybe it's just an age thing that after a while we grow out of these things where we're so obsessed about being really tanned. I mean, it's also very relevant to the culture to where I'm from. I know that in Asia, for instance, it's the absolute opposite. There, everybody wants to be white, as white as possible. I must say though, I love the way I look when I do have a nice tan. And I am able to develop a nice tan, definitely. But it's just too much of an investment in terms of what you sacrifice with your skin and how it ages you. And also the amount of hours I actually have to spend laying on the beach to be able to have a tan. So I have in recent years decided to cut down on that. Just let it go and start maybe appreciating my own color. My own color is quite fair. Never used to like it, but I started to actually like it now. I don't mind it. And as I've stopped exposing myself too much to sun, I somehow I naturally stopped doing any sunbed or any fake suntan. Now I can tell you one thing though, is that I have never really been very much into sunbeds. I've done it only a little bit back in the days. I never really thought that the tan you develop in sunbed is really that nice. I think it just looks a little bit different to the tan you get from real sun. And fake tan has always been one of those things I've done in phases and then stopped. Because it just doesn't matter how much technology evolves and the beauty industry evolves, you stink from face tan. By the way, ladies, have I been saying face tan? If I have been saying face tan, then please let me correct it because it's supposed to be fake tan. <laughs> face tan, okay. Anyway, going back. So my issues with fake tan is that I just think that it stinks. I've tried every brand out there. They all smell. Even those that smell much less smell. And number two, I mean, even though a lot of them give you some form of a brown color, there is always that kind of yellow or orange undertone that you're just never going to get rid of. So for me, I've just decided that it's not worth it. I don't like it that much anymore. I'm not saying that I'm never going to do a fake tan ever in my life. I'm sure I will be doing it once in a while, but it's just not something that I do anymore on a regular level. Number seven, and this is actually the last thing that I've done. I started to apply much less makeup as well. But I think that pretty much, you know, it's a natural involvement if you tattoo your eyebrows and your lips, and then you have fake eyelashes, then what else do you really need? <laughs> 
to do to yourself makeup wise. Well, okay, there's actually one thing that I've been pretty obsessed with and that is to cover up my enlarged pores. For that reason, I always have a primer, I always wear a foundation, even in summer. Simply because of my pores, I just want to fill them up so that they're not visible. But I think now, because I started doing this laser treatment and it started shrinking my pores, I have actually naturally stopped using so much foundation as a result. I don't need it as much anymore and I realize I don't even like the sensation of wearing foundation. I don't think makeup is bad, I'm not against makeup whatsoever, but one of the things that I'm a firm believer in is that you should use makeup as you please, as you want. There is no limitations to makeup, but the, the end result should be complementary to you and it should look natural and it should look somehow real. And then how much makeup you use to achieve that, that is up to you and that doesn't matter. In my case, I just really prefer feeling as kind of clean as possible and not having too much layers on myself because I just feel more fresh that way. It's truly a feeling with myself rather than something that I want to showcase. But if I'm one of those who want to have a very kind of very natural, natural appearance, then I would say no. I like to have a bit of eyelashes, I like to have a little bit of lip color. That is my thing. So all of that is very individual. You really have to do what's suitable for you and what will elevate you to the next level and not the opposite. So what about appearance goals for 2020? Like I said, ladies, transformation never stops. I am not going to stop evolving my appearance in 2020. I am going to set new beauty goals and uh, keep experimenting in a safe way though. We don't want to experiment to the point that we start looking horrendous. So what are the things that I'm going to set as beauty goals for myself? Well, actually I would say there are like two things. Number one, I will continue on the project to shrink my pore size. I do want to finalize my laser treatments and my ultimate goal is truly to have really nice skin with no big pores and no small acne scars that might still be left there for my acne years. And number two, a thing that actually, well, yeah, this was what I wanted to mention to you. So because I have been changing hairdressers a lot in Geneva, unfortunately, some of them did not necessarily do a good job with me color-wise. So the project for 2020 will definitely be to establish some form of hair color for myself. I want to change it a little bit more. I want to go a little bit more ashy because at the moment there is still a bit of warm tones in my color, which I don't like. And also it's not suitable with my cool skin tone. So I want to cool off my own hair and uh, I need to find a good hairdresser in Geneva who can help me with that. So fingers crossed. Ladies, what are your beauty goals for 2020? I really want to hear from you in the comment section below. And if you haven't watched my before and after video where you will find out more about everything that I've done to my face, then watch my before and after transformation video right now after this video because ladies, I am going to see you there.